One of the greatest teams to ever play professional baseball came from Washington, D.C. But some Americans might be surprised to learn that it was not the Washington Nationals. In 1910, a group of black steel workers from the suburbs of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, formed an organized baseball team that would eventually become one of baseball's greatest dynasties. They called themselves the Homestead Grays. Homestead, which is where the Grays really started, was a suburb, but it really was a steel industry town. It was almost a subset of Pittsburgh where all the steel mills were, and white steel workers were excluding black steel workers from their baseball teams. So black steel workers, you know, in around 1910, started their own team. This became the Homestead Grays. It was a re recreational team. Around 1914, 1915, this light-skinned black man named Cumberland Posey, who was one of the best athletes in the city and whose father was a part owner in the Pittsburgh Courier, decided to take this team over. And he really turned it into the, one of the best black professional teams on the East Coast. He started signing up guys, you know, put them on salary, traveling through West Virginia. By the end of the 30s, when the Grays were no longer able to make it playing their home games in Pittsburgh, Cumberland Posey, who was still the owner of this team, he wasn't playing anymore, um, recognized Washington as a hot spot. And he saw all the people moving into the city, saw Griffith Stadium as a real gold mine for a black baseball team. He started playing a few games in, in um, Washington in the late 30s, probably starting in around 37, he started playing games there. Not as the home team, but just an occasional game, you know, just like they would barnstorm anywhere else. Um, but in 1940, Washington officially became the Gray's second home city. In the 1940s, Washington, D.C. was a cultural mecca for African-American jazz and art on the East Coast, second only to Harlem in New York City. Duke Ellington played there and all the great, uh, you know, Ella Fitzgerald and U.B. Blake and, you know, there, there was a circuit. They would go around the big cities and uh, play uh, in, in, in each of the, uh, in each town which had a big black population. When they came to Washington, that's where they went. That was where all the nightclubs were. Uh, and coincidentally, Griffith had put his white stadium right there. Playing at Griffith Stadium the Grays began to draw more crowds than the cellar-dwelling Washington Nationals franchise. The Grays played at Griffith Stadium on nights when the Senators were out of town. So when the Senators would go on a road trip, the Grays would play in there. And so like you would have nights where the Grays might draw 25,000 against the Kansas City Monarchs, and then they would go away. And then the St. Louis Browns would come into town um, against the Senators, and the Senators might draw five or six thousand people, you know, for a St. Louis Browns game. So you had, on many occasions, not every occasion, the Grays outdrawing the Senators in their own ballpark with, you know, a much smaller black population compared to the overall white population because Washington in the 40s was not yet a majority black city. It was close. It was inching up toward a majority black city, but it was not yet a majority black city. Sadly, the Grays would never receive the adulation they were due and the historical record suffers because of the ignorance and deliberate oversight of those times in America. Um, you cannot follow the history of the Grays by looking at what's in the Washington Post. You'd have to go to the black newspapers to see it. So for a lot of white Washingtonians, people who lived in the city, who weren't regular visitors at Griffith Stadium, they didn't even know who the Homestead Grays were. You know, they were just the Homestead Grays were really sort of underground almost for white people. It was sort of like a mystery. You know, outside of the Howard Theater, um, there wasn't a lot of contact between black entertainers and white people. And the Howard Theater, of course, was right next door to Griffith Stadium. Um, but, you know, people were sort of so fixated on the centers, they didn't realize that the really good baseball team in baseball, you know, the team that won you know, seven Negro National League titles in an eight-year period was a homestead grace.